Good afternoon, everybody. It's Wednesday, and that means it's time for We Become the Stories We Tell Wednesdays. It's the new series that I would like to bring to you every Wednesday at noon time. That's sort of a break in your day, and maybe it's uh, the evening already, or maybe it's morning for you, and this is how you're starting your day. And I wanted to start with a quote from Rebecca Solnit that I found really powerful. Hi, Praveen, I'm glad you're here today. Hi, Trika, hello, all the way from Nepal. So I, I wanted to start with this quote that I really, really love from Rebecca Solnit. We are our stories, stories that can be both prison and the crowbar to break open the door of that prison. We make stories to save ourselves or trap ourselves, stories that lift us up or smash us against the stone wall of our own limits and fears. Liberation is always a part of the storytelling process, breaking stories, breaking silences, making new stories. A free person tells his or her own story. A valued person lives in a society in which his or her story has a place. Rebecca Solnit. So I wanted to start with that because I really believe this to be true and it's the entire premise behind the program, the project, We Become the Stories We Tell. And are we allowing ourselves in our stories, are we creating prisons around ourselves through the story we're telling ourselves about ourselves? Or are we using that crowbar to break free maybe from those old labels and to shed those and using that to move out of the prison we might have constructed around ourselves? Or maybe someone else constructed that prison around us and we are sitting in it. And we're forgetting somehow that we are the ones in control of our story. Our life story is our control. And to give someone else that power disempowers ourselves. And so thinking about that myself, and I want to say hello to everyone who's joined. Thank you, Timothy, for being here, and Ariel, and Will, and Nick, and Mark. I'm so glad you're here. And this idea to carry forward in the stories we're telling about our own lives. And that can include, if you're a performer, the kinds of stories you share when you perform. Are you bringing hope to the equation? Are you bringing doom and gloom to the equation? Are you hiding behind only humor in the story that you're sharing? Or are you sharing things where you're really digging deep for yourself and for those who you're serving? Hi, Mark. Hi, Mike Lockett. Hi, Beth. I'm glad you're here. So when I'm sharing this, I'm not necessarily speaking about the um, maybe the typical well, gosh, what is the typical storytelling world anymore? There is no typical storytelling world. And that's beautiful if you ask me. It has expanded in ways that uh, in my own journey I never imagined and evolved and has created space for so many different kinds of stories to be shared. So this isn't about storytelling in, in that kind of crafting. I'm really speaking about our life stories that each of us carries and the journey that we're on and how we navigate or don't, how we propel ourselves or stop ourselves through the stories we're telling about ourselves. So I really, um, I'm thankful for that idea of our story, our life story being a prison that we create, or this crowbar where we break free. And in our story, are we creating prisons for other people? Or are we creating crowbars that other people can start peeling away, pushing those bars apart and setting themselves free in what they're telling? I think that's really powerful and really important for us to consider. And in the story, in our life story that we're sharing publicly as we, as we navigate, especially with all of the social media we've got now, are we using this as any kind of platform to help other people break free from their story? Or are we using it as a way to imprison ourselves in one line of story, meaning in one aspect that are we allowing that to color our entire container and turn that into our entire story. And all of our stories are so multifaceted. There's so many aspects to it. So just thinking about that, and I don't know if anyone has um, anything they want to, you're certainly welcome to put things in the comments. And I refer to that. I look at the comment thread as it's going. And this is a new series for me. So part of the plan is to simply share. Um, and one ask, ask a question for those who are joining in live right now. If you want to type in the chat, if there's been a story in your own life, something that you've moved through that felt like a prison, and how did you set yourselves free? 
And I ask that of the people who are tuning in later, who are listening to this after it's live, I'd like you to consider that. Is, this a, is there a story, is there an event in your life or an experience that you've had that you're using to imprison yourself? And is it time to use that crowbar? Can you give us an example, Mark asks? Are you talking about informal Facebook sharing? I'm talking about life in general, Mark. I'm talking about I'm a, I'm a wide open book, so either way. So for example, I'll give you one from my own life that um, you know I am very public about having episodic cyclical depression. And I don't view that as a prison. I view that as, um, has it sometimes felt like a prison to have depression and have self-doubt? Sure does. Raging imposter syndrome, hello, right here. And that can feel really overwhelming, and it can feel like a prison. I can feel trapped in that. And then when I allow myself to speak about it and say, how could I look at this differently? How could I look at my different brain chemistry? Not as a prison, but is that, is that a different kind of crowbar that can lead me to vulnerability and sharing that part of my story in a healing aspect of, hey, here's something I face as a challenge in moving through depression. The self-doubt is really tough. Um, here's a tool that worked for me. Hey, for me, reaching out to others to remind me who I really am in that moment, because I can't see it, has helped me a lot. Do I use that as a prison? No. I don't know, Mark, if that helps at all. Um, and talking about ways we can share, there are so many different ways we can share this. I'm thinking about, um, I'm thinking about my journey growing up with a father. Hi, Meg. It's glad to, I'm glad you're here. Um, with a father who had multiple suicide attempts, I could have used that as a prison. I could have used that as, well, you know, I grew up with a, a father who had multiple suicide attempts and a, and a mother who had um, extreme anxiety and really, and, she, and understandably so. I mean, she's living with her spouse who's got multiple suicide attempts and trying to help that person. That had to be incredibly overwhelming for her too. So I could have looked at that as a complete prison of, um, and prison maybe exchange the word excuse um, as something that completely hindered me and held me back. And for me, it was a way to break free in a different way. Meg, you make a great point. Self-doubt is the real prison. Yes, and it often feels like it for sure. I know that I moved through that, and um, I have to constantly remind myself of who I am and what I bring to the world and what I offer. And I will be happy to be that reflective mirror for anybody else who moves through self-doubt. Here's the thing about self-doubt. I know very, very few, well, in my own circle, I can honestly tell you of all the people I know, I don't know a single person who hasn't struggled with that at one point or another. Um, it, is, it is a human condition where sometimes that can actually be, self-doubt can be a little bit of a gift. And here's how I flipped it recently. That self-doubt often propels and motivates me to take action and do things does it sometimes have the reverse effect where I don't send an email because of the self-doubt? Sure, it can. It can have both sides to it. And so looking at self-doubt, if you can look at what is the potential gift in that self-doubt? Does it make you more compassionate? It does for me. Um, does it make you more vulnerable and in that way allow someone else to be more vulnerable? Does it sometimes stop us? Yes. And here's the thing, if we're aware of it, well, there's the first step. We're aware of that self-doubt. Meg, I'm really glad you brought that um, self-doubt up in the comment because it is such a pervasive prison for so many people. And we have the crowbar. We have the crowbar right here. And sometimes that crowbar is asking someone else when we're deep in self-doubt to remind us of who we are. Remind me who you see in me. Remind me of some of the accomplishments I may have done um, and for some of us, accomplishments are measurement of how we, and, and hello, I'm one of those people. I'm moving farther away from that. Um, I heard a really great quote last night in Alt-MBA. We had the coaching selection process yesterday, and it was incredibly inspiring. We moved through all these different scenarios of how we would give feedback um, based on some different um, real life examples. And I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I can't share any of those because that's private. But one of the quotes was really looking at how do we measure success? 
And what if success has nothing to do with how much money we make or any of that, but success is more how have we in that particular day been of significance for someone, meaning we reached out to someone, we were there for someone, we encouraged someone. That is success. Um, and Nick says, storytelling tends to be a way of freedom for me versus a prison. Weird out, I can talk to hundreds of people about things I don't tell a few people. Nick, I can totally appreciate that. Absolutely. And there's been a huge trend with um, sort of the moth opening it up. And now there's so many different storytelling stages where I'm thinking of one in particular actually called This Is My Brave. And This Is My Brave, I want to give them a shout out because they do amazing work started by Jennifer Marshall, and it's a platform where people share their journey through different brain chemistry, whatever that might be for them. And it is so powerful. And so many of the people who've been on the This Is My Brave stage share that it was the first time they shared their journey. And yeah, Nick, exactly. They spoke about something that maybe they hadn't even told their spouse the amount of struggle they've been going through. And yet having that platform to share it in that safe container in that moment, the beauty of that is it opens up, opens up the ability to then share it with the people who are closest to us once we are in that safe container. Um, so there, yeah, storytelling as an, as an art form in the way that you are speaking of it, Nick, and I, I know Mark uh, Goldman and Mike Lockett come to it from that aspect too in all the different ways you can share story in an art, in a creative sense that way for it to be incredibly healing for people. And in Mike Lockett's story, he rewrites um, and tells and crafts a lot of stories for youth audiences. And yes, it's more entertaining. And in his stories, there's always hope. And there's always, um, gosh, there's just always hope in his stories. And that's healing too. So we don't have to go at it from a completely therapeutic standpoint. And then from the stories we tell in our own lives for all of us, for every single one of us, whether we call ourselves a storyteller or not, because this, we become the stories we tell Wednesdays is for everybody, is really looking at your life story, looking at the narrative you're creating. And again, just check in with yourself. Are you creating a prison for yourself? Or are you seeing that in the other hand, beyond those walls, you've got a crowbar? And you can start to peel those bars apart one by one with layers. So Mark says, Angela Lloyd has said, whenever I'm in a new situation where I'm not familiar with what's going on and I might get stressed out, I think of the hero's journey. Yeah, I put trust in that process. I will find a helper, gain the magic knowledge I need to survive. Absolutely, absolutely. And for those who aren't familiar, you can Google hero's journey and Joseph Campbell. And there's some really great graphics now that show it um, in a cycle. So if you're a more visual person, you can see it in that way. And yeah, super powerful, Mark, really powerful. And to think of ourselves, again, as the hero in our own story, and I, I touched on that last week. So that's our theme for today, to consider and to take a moment and reflect, is your story your prison? Where is the crowbar to break free of it? And if any of you want to um, tap into me for any um, assistance along that journey, I'm happy. I'm here for that. And I'm really excited that I'll be fully launching um, the online We Become the Stories We Tell. I've got an online 30-day, and I do face-to-face -face versions of this. And I'm going to be doing webinars of small groups. So um, I'm just excited that this is going to become even more of my life. Um, it's already an important aspect of my life, and I want to dive in even more. So thank you for being here today, and I'll be with you next Wednesday at this time. And each week, I choose the themes as the inspiration comes. And I learned that uh, partly from Elizabeth Ellis, a storyteller who does beautiful healing storytelling work. And I really appreciate about her that there's great flexibility in the stories she chooses to tell, even in the moment, as uh, telling what the audience in that moment needs. And this is what came up for me this morning. I was looking through some of the face-to-face -face workshops, my notes that I've done on this, and I saw this quote by Rebecca Solnit, and I really, really love it. 
So I'm going to copy and paste that quote in the comment. In fact, I am going to do that right now. So you've got her amazing quote. And then if you feel like keeping it for yourself, you may do so too, because she is um, just a wonderful human. So thank you all for tuning in. I'm keeping these real short and sweet, just like I try to be. So here's your hug for the day. And keep thinking about your story as your prisoner, your crowbar. And if you want to share something in the comments afterwards, I save these and they're, they're on my wall. And if you can think of anyone um, who might benefit from today's theme, feel free to feel free to share, tag a friend in it or not. Um, I do this just to whoever shows up is exactly who's supposed to be here and however it's shared is exactly how it's supposed to be shared. I will say, well, thank you, Mark. Um, I'm off on going to central Pennsylvania tomorrow for several days with my friend Amira uh, in the woods, in the middle of nowhere, and there's a lake like 30 minutes away, and we're gonna go on a boat, and I'll have my flippy floppies on, and I am so excited to just disconnect. Um, she says cell phone service doesn't really work there. Awesome. Apparently, uh, the internet does, but my goal is to have at least two days, zero, zero technology, um, just to immerse in nature, because that's another way to break free. Sometimes uh, all this technology, can feel like a little bit of a prison and it's time to take that crowbar and say, all right, I need to break free for a moment and just breathe and be, uh, be super present without a screen in front of my face. So another hug. Have a wonderful day and may your story be a crowbar, not a prison. See you next week, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.